So today I want to talk to you about a few different things. Number one, what the world looked like pre-pandemic, what the world is looking like during the pandemic, and then what the world is going to look like post-pandemic. So imagine you and I are having a barbecue in 2019. We're you know, grilling some steaks or we're uh, drinking some brews, smoking some cigars. And you tell me that in 2020, the world is going to shut down, this coronavirus is going to be an outbreak, that the uh, people are going to be in a position where they can't go back to the world, and everything is going to be running online via Zoom in a virtual type of world. What would you tell me? Hmm? Now, fast forward to March 2020. What happened? Fauci makes the announcement. This is officially a coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic. Businesses shut down. Some announced they're, they're, they're never going to be opening back up again. A large part of the restaurants will say, I'm in bankruptcy. This is one of the biggest retail apocalypses that's happening. 50% shut down, 25% shut down. People are clamoring, can I get back to work? Can I make some hours up? I need to clock in. I need to feed my family. Next thing you know, we got COVID checks coming out, stimulus checks, stimulus plan coming in. Could you imagine a world like that? That's what we're living in today. So businesses fell into one of three different categories. Number one, they went out of business. Bankruptcy, never to reopen ever again. The second, they stayed the same. And the third category is these companies grew exponentially. Now, during the beginning of the pandemic, we as an organization, we clearly didn't know what to do. However, we learned how to pivot. We learned how to adjust. We learned how to overcome. We learned to use and embrace technology. And here's what we did. Here's what the data shows. This year, in January, we wrote 3,750 policies. In February, we wrote 4,796 policies. Now, in March, lockdown, shutdown, pandemic, people freaking out. We wrote 6,135 policies. The pandemic hit, we wrote 6,264 policies in April. In May, we wrote 11,034 policies. And in June, again, throughout this pandemic, riots, looting, all these different things, we wrote 8,000 82 policies. Now, let me give you a comparison of what we did last year. Last January, we wrote 3,296 policies. February, 3,932. March, 4,575. April, 5,269. May, 5,668. June, 5,203 policies. We went from 27,943 policies to over 40,061 policies which is a 43.4% growth from year over year. At the same time, the commissions we paid out to our sales force has been nothing like we've ever seen before. So what does this mean to you? We realize which industries are not only recession proof, but also pandemic proof. Now, I don't know which industry you are part of, but I can tell you this about us. Pre-pandemic, we're okay. During pandemic, we're okay. In the future, post-pandemic, we're going to be okay. Now, the question you gotta ask yourself is, am I going to be okay? Now, here's how the current reality is gonna play out. Post-pandemic, they're gonna come out the vaccine, some are gonna take it, some are not, and the world, some will get back to normal. People are gonna go back to schools. People are gonna be confident again going back to public places, concerts, restaurants, convention centers, events. Now, here's the thing, what's going to happen? What we've experienced is that every four to six years, some form of virus always comes out and the government is going to remember this playbook of what happened here in 2020 that the future president, the then active president at that time is going to say, you know what, the last time we had something like this go on, a pandemic go on, and we didn't have a vaccine for it, and we won't come out for it for another 12 to 18 months, boom, let's go shut down the country. Let's lock down, let's quarantine, let's stay at home order. Now, if they do that, depending on the industry that you're part of, what have they done? What have they done during these type of current times? What have they done pre-pandemic, during a pandemic, and what do you think they're going to do post pandemic. Now, what I'm telling you is that PHP agency, we're already prepared. We've seen the playbook. We've adjusted through this pandemic. And guess what? We've shown ourselves to grow exponentially. Bottom line, not only have we proven that we are recession proof, but also pandemic proof. Now, the reason why this is so important is think about the people that just lost their jobs. They spent down their savings. I mean, there was an act that says you can withdraw money from your 401k without any penalty. And people drained away their savings, their retirement plans. People charged up their credit cards. People leaned on government, church and charity, and even friends and other family. Now think about how difficult this is. Think about before the pandemic. Wasn't it already tough living for some people, many people, like myself when I was serving United States Marines, living paycheck to paycheck? Wasn't it hard before the pandemic and then now? when you couldn't collect a check, when you even couldn't go to work to collect a check? Here's what I look at. In order for us to have business, 
We have to have business that takes risk to hire workers, to hire products and, and, and buy products and services. And the people need to buy them. And this circle of buying, selling, hiring, growing, expanding has to happen. But if one of those thing, two things aren't happening, then we don't have a lot of business going on. So is it fair to say that if you weren't making enough money pre-pandemic, and especially during the pandemic, and by the way, a lot of people that are making $100,000 a year, I think the stat was one out of four people are still living paycheck to paycheck, even making $100,000 a year in America today, that if you weren't making enough more money, don't you think it's fair to say that you should consider other ways to make more money? And in this video, I'm gonna share with you four steps in how to create wealth. So let me give you some stats of some industries. Look at the airline industry. Look at the automobile industry. Look at the hospitality industry. Look at Nevada. They have the highest unemployment based on casino shutdown, hotel shutdown, conventions centers shutting down. The highest in all the industry has been hospitality and leisure. Now, do you know the unemployment number for the financial services industry? It's not 28%, it's what? 5.3, the least affected industry in the entire marketplace. So what have we learned during this pandemic? We've got two problems. First problem, we've got an income problem. Second problem, we have a savings problem. Let's get back to the first one, income problem. For most people, the pandemic has greatly devastated their income or ability to create money. And consider this, if you don't believe me, 157 million people in America are considered the working class. Well, at the shooting of this video, over 55, 54, 55 million people have officially filed for unemployment. For the last 19 weeks straight, one million people every week has filed for unemployment. When has this happened before? Well, historically speaking, never. So practically, one third of America's working class has filed for unemployment. The second part of the problems we have today is savings. If you don't have enough savings, guess what? You lean on other people. You lean on government. You lean on friends and family. You lean on credit cards. You lean on credit lines. You lean on other things that you don't like to, because guess what? Anytime you lean on somebody else, you lose more and more and more control, financially speaking, of your life. The idea is not to rely on making desperate moves, is not to rely on any of this. So here's what I did, and I encourage you to consider doing this too as well. I served eight years in the United States Marine Corps. When off the military, I got recruited into the insurance industry. And for 12 years, I worked as an independent agent, selling policies, life insurance and annuities, I took some of that savings, I invested in real estate, I took some of that savings and invested in other things. Just like many people in 08, 09, 2008, 2009, I got rocked by the Great Recession. Well, fast forward, I got involved in entrepreneurship, understanding how to build my business, build my practice from just being a salesperson to actually owning and building an agency, technically a tangible asset that one day I can sell. Well, along the process, I met my now wife, Sheena Sapala. And uh, she was a single mom, I was a single dad. I brought three kids to the table, she brought one. Together, we're a blended family. We just had our son together. He's now 17 months old, did the shooting of this video. And we have a unique blended family from children ranging from 24 years old down to 17 months old. But the unique thing about what we experienced and the hardship is I knew how to make money, which is no problem. But saving it was a hard time. Because listen, I got kids, I got responsibilities. Money flows in and out for expenses. Uh, cost of living, activities, vacations, taxes. So it's very difficult to not only make money, but even more so, how to save it. And here's what I realized too, especially with the lifestyle that my wife and I wanted to live and the experiences we wanted to have. I quickly realized that making $100,000 a year was no big deal. I thought it was before, but today, with expenses, cost goods and services, tuition, expenses, raising children, $100,000 a year, it's no big deal. $250,000, even then, no big deal. Now, we started feeling some flexibility at $500,000 a year. Then I asked my wife, hey babe, when did we start feeling some financial freedom? When were we able to take care of our parents, your side of the family, my side of the family? When were we able to invest in some vacations where we're not charging things on credit cards and depending on other people for money? You know what my wife said? Here's what she said. Babe, we start experiencing some financial freedom at $750,000 per year income. What? $750,000 income? Yes, that's exactly where my wife started feeling financial freedom and financial flexibility. And with that being said, my wife and I, we went from making $208,000 our first year at PHB Agency, and from year one to year two, we made $646,000. Then from year two to year three, we made a million dollars and never looked back ever since. And since this pandemic lockdown starts March 1st of 2020, and during the shooting of this video here in August, we've made more money here in five months, five months than we earned in the first two years here at PHP Agency totaling over $800,000. In the last five years, my wife have earned over $5.2 million because we found two solutions to the income problem and the savings problem where 
the PHP agency platform. And so you're watching this and you're saying, well, good for you, Matt. Good for you, Matt and Sheena. Good for your family. But what about my family? How do I figure out those solutions to fix my problems? How do I have $100,000 in back? How do I have $500,000 in back? How do I make sure that if a pandemic were to ever break out ever again, I'm sitting on a pile of cash like a million dollars ready to take on the next pandemic, to, to take on the next recession and look forward to new opportunities that open up? How do I get in that position? So my question for you then is, currently right now, what's your current game plan? Is what you're currently doing right now making you more money in the midst of this pandemic or not? Because here's what I realized about a decision. Here's what I realized about a relationship. I learned more about that decision. I learned more about that relationship, not during the good times, but more importantly, during the bad times. That's when the true character of a decision usually reveals itself. So if you want to create wealth and you would do right for you and your family, You've got to assume that someday down the road, there is going to be another pandemic. Because when it does happen, that's when many people start to become wealthy. They become wealthy not during the best of times, but the people that prepare for it, they become wealthy in the worst of times. You know, military training always taught us, plan for the worst, but always expect for the best. Step number one, if you want to create wealth, you got to learn sales. Sales, what are you talking about, Matt? I got a college degree. I got this advanced education. I shouldn't have to sell. Well, what, what did we realize? What did you learn interviewing for jobs? You realize that if there was a line interviewing for the same job that you wanted, guess what you had to do to the interviewer? Not only with your cover sheet, but when you sat down in front of them, amongst all the competitions interviewing for the same job, guess what you had to do? You had to present yourself and you had to sell yourself on why they should hire you versus them. Isn't that sales? So oftentimes people say, you know, Matt, I'm not, I'm not good at sales, Matt. I'm not, I'm not good at sales. Are you sure? Yeah, man, I'm, I'm really not good at sales. Well, guess what? Wake up call. You are good at sales. You just said a statement. You just said something. Guess what? You bought. You bought a living belief. You bought something you think you couldn't do. You're buying the fact that you can't sell. Here's the reality. Everybody that's in your life that you listen to, everybody, your pastor, your favorite musician, entertainer, even your favorite athlete, actor, guess what they learn how to do? They learn how to sell you their sport. They learn how to sell you the movie. They learn how to sell you to pick up their album, to download their song. Everybody that you love in your life that influences you, guess what they do? They know how to sell. So if you want to get somewhere in your life, you got to learn how to sell. Step number two in how to create wealth, become an entrepreneur. You may not know this about me, but I have zero college experience. I have, I have no college degree. Be between the two of us, my wife, she went to University of Pittsburgh on a full ride scholarship to play softball. And between the two of us, not only is she the hotter, prettier, cuter, more beautiful, but she's also the most athletic between the two of us. She says, babe, I'm so proud of not my college degree, but I'm proud of the business we've been able to build together. Why? Because we've been able to build this together. We've been able to say, you know what, let me embrace entrepreneurship. I remember the first time she was listening to me in my business, she was still running her sales job working for a medical sales company. And she was selling her medical equipment. I was talking to my guys we were building a business. And she goes, babe, um, aren't you like the boss of your company? I said, yeah, babe, why, why do you ask? Because, babe, I've been talking to my boss. I don't like talking to my boss. He sounds like a boss when I talk to him. He makes me feel all on edge. I says, yeah, okay. And she goes, but you, when you talk to your guys, I've been listening to you on Bluetooth. I hear you all over the car and you're, you're coaching your guys. You sound like you're in the locker room. Are you sure you're the boss of your company? I said, babe, why don't you come on down to the office? Anyway, make a long story short, I shared what we do. I shared our, our, our process. I shared her what we teach people about money. I shared with her the things we learned about entrepreneurship and how to get ahead financially. And with her four-year degree in finance, she spent an hour with one of my guys. She leaves the boardroom after spending an hour with my guys. We were still dating at the time. I didn't want to know about her finance. I didn't want to know about her financial situation. She was, babe, I learned more about money, personal finance, sitting with an hour with one of your guys than my four years in college to learn about finance. Thank God you have a business to teach the average and ordinary people about the basic rules of the money game, which today, sadly, they're losing. So entrepreneurship has allowed the average and ordinary kid like me, where my parents immigrated from the Philippines, an average and ordinary kid like my sister and I to, to go somewhere in this country and make something of ourselves, to go from nowhere to somewhere, to go from broke to bone, to go from scratch to success. That's what entrepreneurship allowed us to do. It allowed us to get through all the bureaucracy and say, you know, if I'm willing to work hard, if I'm willing to work hard in the right th at the right things, and I'm willing to put in the work and to get a result based on the merits of my own efforts, boom. That's what the embrace of American entrepreneurship and capitalism is all about. 
It allowed average ordinary kids like me and you to say, you know what, I demand better for my life. Let me work hard in this industry. Let me work hard in business versus for somebody else. Watch, watch the benefits that come at you. 86% of people who became millionaires were self-made. They didn't inherit money. They learned how to take something, a product or service, an idea, an invention, and to make something for themselves. And that's a benefit. This is the biggest benefit package of the United States of America is entrepreneurship, capitalism, free enterprise, and going in business for yourself. And by the way, for some of you who think, you know, I really need to go to college to, to be hired and, and to, to make something of ourselves because I'm gonna be the first person in my family. I'm gonna be the first Johnson. I'm gonna be the first Lopez. I'm gonna be the first Sapala. I'm gonna be the first Aguilar. I'm gonna be the first Gaetan. I'm gonna be the first person to potentially go to college and make something of ourselves. Well, guess what the entrepreneurship says? Hey, you can bypass all that. Matter of fact, if there's an executive order that I love, that President Trump has signed in is an executive order that said, you know what, we're gonna hire people based on skill set and experience over college degrees. That's right, skill sets and experience over college degrees. And guess what? Many companies today, they followed suit. Google, Apple, Facebook, all these other companies that say, you know, we're going to hire you based on skill set and experience and ability to get the work done over having a college degree. So the question you gotta ask yourself is, who is teaching you entrepreneurship? Which leads me to step number three, picking the right industry. So let's take a look at some of the industries that sadly have left through unemployment from May 2019 to May 2020. You're looking at industry of mining, oil and gas, construction, manufacturing, wholesale, retail and create, transportation, utilities, information, professional business services, education, health services, leisure and hospitality taking the biggest hit at 35.9%. Government workers, self-employed workers, unincorporated, unpaid family workers, and the least impacted industry in May 2019, May 2020 is financial activities. Yes, this industry is the least impacted. Why? Because many people were able to adapt, pivot, especially through the platform or PHP agency, which I'll get to here in a second, by using technology, by being innovative, and being able to adapt to this current moment. So when you're looking at these industries, you have to ask yourself, I've been working really hard as an oil field worker, like Alejandro Aguilar and his brother, Ricky Aguilar. I've been working really hard in real estate, like Marlene Gaetan and Hector and Erica Del Toro. I've worked really, really hard for the government. I've been working really hard as an architect. So we say I'm working really hard in loss prevention security work at Sears, like Rodolfo Vargas. I was an architect like Ceci Vargas. And just to think, I was considering becoming a mechanic on helicopters, because that's what I did in the Marine Corps. I was a door gunner and a helicopter. I was thinking about being a mechanic and working for Boeing or working for an airline, working for helicopters and uh, get my P&E license to work for airport. But to think that that industry is the biggest impacted industry right now in the marketplace, that the people working leisure and hospitality, to see these people being laid off from casinos and hotels. I mean, I'm checking right now into uh, hotels and they don't even offer a daily maid service because they're afraid of getting people's rooms when they're staying overnight for a period of days. So they don't even offer daily made cleaning services. Just to think about those workers that are laid off, thinking about those jobs that are being supported right now. And I'm thinking about the airline industry right now. Just think about the airline industry as well as the tourism that's impacted by the lack of travel that's happening right now. Here's some numbers, let's take a look at TSA check-ins. In March of 2019 versus March of 2020, when the pandemic started to begin, less people flew from one year to the last. March 16th, 2020, when the pandemic really started to take place, 1.2 million people flew versus 2.4 million of last year. Let's go a month later to April, a day before tax day, April 14, 2020, 87,000 people flew versus 2.2 million people last year. I think it's fair to say that the airline industry is taking one of the biggest hits. And by the way, the airline industry is one of the better paying professions, one of the better paying industries out there. But right now, they're not flying and earning money as they were last year. I think Warren Buffett sold four of his stocks that he owned in, in his Berkshire Hathaway portfolio. And there are many other industries being impacted. By the way, one of my favorite ones was the restaurant industry because when I got the military, one of my jobs was an Olive Garden server. Yeah, that's right, I'm wowing you right now with my resume. Mr. Millionaire, I'm wowing you with my resume as a servant Olive Garden. Yes, that was what I was doing. Sadly, if it was me leaving the military today and I need to get a job at Olive Garden, sadly, I might not be getting hired because of what's going on with this pandemic. So some of the biggest problems you might experience based on your industry is number one, is it pandemic or recession proof? And the second part of it is, is this industry allowing me to use technology? Because technology will allow you to adapt and more importantly, to evolve. Because I've 
had experience in this industry now for 21 years. I've seen the dot-com bubble, I've seen the 08-09 Great Recession, and now I've seen the pandemic recession. I've seen the effects of the pandemic shutdown. And guess which industries continue to grow because of pain and emergencies in a country? The insurance industry, which leads me to my fourth point in how to create wealth, platform. Why is platform so important? By the way, not every company in our industry is growing. Matter of fact, we're outgrowing our industry based on our ability to adapt, evolve, and adjust due to the pandemic. And why is the platform so important? Because your platform of the company you're working for in the industry that you're working in has got to be able to evolve. And here's the thing about PHB Agency. We're young, we're multicultural, we got a lot of energy. We have a competitive culture with inside our organization. It's part of the big reasons why my wife and I chose this platform of PHP agency to make a career change and to build a business upon. And one of the coolest part is being able to co-brand our team name, the Money Smart Movement organization, with inside the platform of PHP agency. It's also allowed me to evolve a YouTube channel called The Seven Figure Squad to help people understand the ways to think like a millionaire, how to strategize like a millionaire, and how, obviously how to become a millionaire and be able to build that upon the PHP agency platform. And I know what some of you guys are thinking, well, Matt, I don't know much about the insurance industry. Man, I don't know about how to sell. I don't know much about how to build a business. Well, that's a benefit of a platform. Why? Because a lot of the things that you are thought of, the things that you might hold a lot of disbelief in that you say has a shortcoming in, we have a blueprint on this platform to show you how to go from A to Z. Listen, if a jarhead like me can figure this stuff out, if the many of the people inside our firm who don't have much of a, much more than a high school degree can figure this out. They don't have a financial background, they don't have a business background, can figure this business out because of our blueprint, because of this platform. Listen, you can figure this out. If you're willing to study, if you're willing to be a student of business, if you're willing to open up a manual, if you're willing to watch videos, if you're willing to get on Zoom trainings with our people all across the country from different experiences in different backgrounds and different levels of experiences uh, with working with this client or working with this type of field, you can jump on those Zooms and learn this business because a lot of things not only are taught but a lot of things also, especially in business, in this type of time, a lot of things in business are caught. And for some of you thinking, you know, Matt, I got such of a long learning curve to learn about this career, the long, the long learning curve to learn about entrepreneurship, the long learning curve to learn about this industry. Guess what our platform provides? I guess it gives you an opportunity to shorten that learning curve into a power curve, into a success curve. That's what a power of platform allows you to do. Listen, this platform allowed my wife, once again, to go from zero to $5.2 million in five years. Not because we were smart, but because of the system that's on this platform that you can follow. Listen, it can happen to us. Potentially, it can happen to you. The question for you is, are you willing to do the work? Are you willing to make the time? Is it off-putting for you to actually invest smartly into your business, into getting licenses? And when my wife and I, with our children, said, you know what, let's go all in. Let's figure this business out. Let me be coachable. Let me be teachable. Let me be aligned. Let me listen, let me incorporate. Here's what happened to our life. I remember coming on board to PHP Agency and we can barely do much of anything to the point where I couldn't even put WD-40 on the passenger side of my Cadillac Escalade because every time I opened up this door, it'd go pop, 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 pop. I was so embarrassed to get people coming to my Cadillac Escalade because it'd make noise every time I opened up the door. And just to think, just in a short period of time to be able to incorporate this system to jump onto this platform, to wrap our minds again around this industry, align ourselves with people who are doing it and help me avoid a lot of mistakes. We've been able to travel the world. I remember our first trip, we went to Dubai. And I remember Dubai because 20 years ago, I was there as a United States Marine. Fast forward 20 years later, and now I'm coming back to Dubai as an entrepreneur. I get to be able to enjoy what the Persian Gulf was all about in 90 degree temperature weather, jumping off from a 100 foot yacht into the water to be able to stay in a private villa in Puerto Vallarta, to be able to see the 100th running of the Indianapolis Formula F1 races, to be able to go to Greece and Croatia, to be able to see Venice, Italy, to be able to see the Caribbean, to enjoy Cancun swimming with whale sharks, our kids zip lining through the jungles of Costa Rica, to be able to see our friends experience F1 races like Jose Gaetan, seeing the F1 race in Monaco, to see restaurants all over the world, to see the private chef of Prince Diana cook for a leadership group, to be able to sit with celebrities like Kevin Hart and play poker with him, to meet the late, great Kobe Bryant, to see a former president, George W. Bush, come to our company convention, to see our people qualify for a 160-foot yacht being wined and dined and shined in the Maldives, jumping again off the yacht. I guys love to jump off yachts. To see one year where the company put blindfolds on us, 
and walked us out of the convention center, out of the Rio, and our top guys were standing next to each other, blindfolded, and when they told us to remove the blindfolds, we saw a Lamborghini right in front of us, Ferraris, Porsches, Rolls Royce, to see us not take Uber through Las Vegas, but to take Ferraris to the Del Frisco Steakhouse to see the different bottles of wine that were exposed, to see this lifestyle that we only saw in magazines, to see the White House of Beverly Hills, to see our leadership retreat there at the former home of the BCBG fashion designer. And to think, instead of surprising us in Vegas by renting a Lamborghini exotic car for us to enjoy, to think that a couple years later, we are able to own them, seeing our guys buy Ferraris, Lambos, Ashton Martins, Audi R8s, Rolls Royce. All those things were happening based on this platform, the lifestyle we were able to create through the PHP agency platform experience. And think about the time that we've invested here in business, about the time we invested here in an industry that actually pays. Because here's what I realized. A lot of my military brothers and sisters, we work really, really hard, but sadly we're in a field, a sector that doesn't pay. So in other words, sure, sacrifice for a country, fight for freedom, United States, America, apple pie, all that good stuff, patriotism, I love it. I'm more than happy to do it. But I didn't make any money doing it. And thank God when I started realizing that I need to be in a profession, I need to be in a career that I didn't also have to invest four or five years to get a college degree and hopefully somebody's gonna hire me. I chose the industry of entrepreneurship, the path of entrepreneurship, the industry of, the in, of insurance and, and understanding that this platform can take me from scratch to success and guide me and mentor and be in my corner and all the things that support me here to get me ahead financially, to get me thinking differently. One of my greatest quotes of Patrick Bedev, our CEO, my mentor said, listen, Matt, hang around us long enough and you start thinking for yourself. Because I didn't realize that the way I was thinking caused me to be broke, that the programming, the blueprint that I was raised to be in, I wasn't raised in a language, in a thought process that was creating wealth. So as much as I'm giving you the four steps to create wealth, if you're not verbalizing and surrounding yourself and marinating yourself in an environment that's also thinking money, that's also thinking wealth, that's also thinking about the next three, four, five moves of your life to get you to and through this pandemic, you may not get ahead anywhere financially. That's why I'm so glad that when I got recruited into this industry, when I got recruited into PHP agency, I'm so glad that somebody smartly inconvenienced me to watch a video, to attend a workshop, to come to an event, to talk to people that were very, very indifferent to me. That I looked at them like, what are we trying to say? What are we trying to get at me? And they made me understand my current reality. They had me look at the mirror financially speaking, of my life. And if I was gonna ask myself, if I'm gonna continue to do what I continue to do, am I gonna get what I really wanna get? My answer to that question was no. I just get older, I just be more broker, I just be more in disbelief, I have a little bit more anxiety, and I start slipping, slipping away from the things I really wanted in my life. And just to think what my life has turned out here the last five years here at PHB Agency, the friends that we've made, the relationships that we created, the bonds that have been formed. Did I remember being a single father and my wife being a single mom. And the thing that we have between us now, building a business together on this platform, the last thing we argue about right now is having enough money to pay the bills. Now, do we still argue about money? 100%, absolutely. But now we argue about where the money's going to go, not the fact that we don't have enough. That level of anxiety and doubt and disbelief that working hard and we don't have anything to show for it is gone. Matter of fact, we're having arguments of who we support, what charities to support which family members we're going to retire. It's crazy what this industry, what this platform, what this culture, what this mentorship can do for you. Now, some of you guys are thinking, you know, is this true? Listen, if a guy like me can figure this stuff out, and I'm nobody special, I don't come from a pedigree. I don't come from a wealthy background. I didn't come from an inheritance. If an average minority kid like me, if a military veteran like me can figure this stuff out, my wife, an average, an average ordinary beautiful girl, softball player can figure this business out and our children see the fruit of our labor. I'm reminded of what a nine-year-old said, mommy, poppy, when I grow up, I want to do what you do. I said, Georgia, why do you want to do what we do? It's because you guys look like you have fun. And when I grow up one day and I have a career and I have a business, I want to have fun doing it too. I want to take over your business. That's what he tells us. You know, kids don't remember what you tell them. They remember what you do and the experiences that you put them through. And when I'm thinking about our career, I'm thinking about what PHP agency has done for us. And to know that, again, we're nobody special, but if it happened to us, possibly, if you're willing to do the work, you're willing to step into the plate, put your toes on the line and say, you know what, I'm gonna bet on me for once. I'm not gonna depend and bet on the government. I'm gonna depend and bet on my 
uh, uh, job, my current environment. I'm going to bet on me as an entrepreneur in an industry that pays well, proven itself to pay well during a pandemic to anticipate potentially the next pandemic that might break out. So if you're watching this, my recommendation for you is to do this. Get back with the person that invited you and ask them, hey, let me see the compensation video. Ask him for the comp video. Ask him, hey, how do I get paid at this thing? Ask him for this video. Thank them for them sending you this video and also ask them for our compensation video. So therefore, you're clear on how we get paid and potentially how you can get paid. So with that being said, I appreciate your time and attention to watching this video. I hope that you text or send a message back to the person that sent you this video and you're asking again for the compensation video. Drop your thoughts, drop your comments below in the comment section of this video. Again, I'm your Chief Distribution Officer, Matthew Sapala, money smart guy, and until we meet again, continue to help people, continue to love people, and continue to change your life today.